Wired. Unplugged. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wired Unplugged. Episode 947. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Dick. What the hell happened between last week and this week? Oh, <laughs> it feels like I've been gone a very long time. Um, Gary, it's you with me Good. today as Aaron Good is... Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, nice to have you, man. Listen, well, it's, it's good to be back. We've got to uh... stop meeting like this, though. Like, this is basically the only interaction that we, we ever get, really, isn't it? Is just, like, ships uh, passing in, in the wired unplugged night. And I'm, I'm still going to put this out there, Okay. I still have never had both you and Aaron in the same episode at the same time. This is the, the third, fourth time now in, is, in a row yeah, where it, we're it, just it, trading it, off back it, and forth. It's one or the other, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Oh. It's like we're crime fighters and one of us has always got to look after Gotham or something like that, you know? Exactly. So. You're off dealing with, with Metropolis right now and, and, and Aaron's... Yeah, I, I get it. I get Absolutely. It. I actually went to save Toronto this time oh. so i've come back and i am very 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 uh jet lagged but the good news is that like when i came back to the uk i got to catch up on all of the news everywhere so this podcast i am experiencing it almost like you dear listener slash viewer um you, you, you're looking tired but you're looking kind of full to the brim with news. that's what it you is are, you, you are bursting at the same weighed with down video game content just that's, ready that's it we're, we're ready to go so you know i've got to say um actually uh i left the country come back and like the video game news cycle has been a strange one because we're off the back of a lot of um big releases and things like that and i yeah. guess like the the kind of industry as a whole are just gearing up towards like the next big thing which yeah. is like... Like, like june happened like uh, and everyone in the industry whether so... you're you know first of all like general round of applause if you're on the industry side of things in, in any capacity you made it through june well done yeah. you did it yeah. you know, it doesn't matter whether you're <laughs> exactly. pr whether you're news <laughs> whether you're an editor whether you're a developer whether you're a publisher heck whether you're a content creator like, like guess what june is done the events are done the, the, the coverage yeah. is done everyone can just exhale let's just take a moment and just well done we made a, it a little break just a short one though <laughs> a little break. A short one. Going. so i looked at the news and i was like oh and it's been quite a lot of news there's been quite a lot of like sad news in the industry really so uh, i mean like there's a lot of, like some developers have passed away at very young ages or yeah. like famous games journalists have found themselves in ill health so to take this even, very... even content creators, like uh, not something I was aware of, mm. but um, you, you know, I, I very much never fell into the Minecraft hole. But but Technoblade and, and whatnot was kind of a, a massive, yeah, a massive um, you know loss over over the weekend, where a lot of um, mutuals who who very much did grow up on that kind of content, yeah, um, hugely inspirational, right? Exactly, it shows the impact, I guess, that that people have knowingly or unknowingly on others uh, which is a good thing you yeah. know um you know live the kind of life that you you leave that kind of ripple um i guess is a, a good guideline to go on but yeah techno so shouts out to techno blades and like we've got to give a shout out to wired alum professor dare who also passed away this week yeah um, but we should really i mean not to start off the show <laughs> with sad news it's always a little bit awkward to do so but um we're way back uh, if folks aren't familiar way back before wired became the publisher that you know us as mm -hmm. um far today we worked with lots of different partners um a multitude of people very talented across a whole different range of products and software and apps and and, and all sorts and one of these was uh was professor dare <laughs> was his uh, known alias who we worked with basically to create a range of apps and quizzes and that was kind of his shtick. That's what he was really good at. But it yeah. was kind of, I mean, you, you look at modern, any modern kind of, um, you, you know, engagement based content nowadays, it's all quizzes and, and kind of getting yeah, people on. Sure. And, and way back in, in 2011, he was very much a propagator of that. And, and we worked with him on uh, many things. He did uh, the World of Wizardry quiz. It had like over 2,000, I think it was, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a lot. Harry Potter trivia <clears throat> questions, which. Yeah. You know, some people have made their entire careers knowing that kind of stuff now. And, and you know, we were very fortunate um, to, to be able to work with him in such a capacity. Um, you know, 
as with anyone, I guess, that we work with, but whether it's developer side, whether it's partner side, you know, the, the yeah. whole, as you covered in PAX, right? Like when you work with Wired, it becomes very much a, a family mm-hmm. unit. It, it's something that, you know, you just because we have worked with you and we are done, that doesn't mean that, that we are done, you, you know, where we still have to, we have that duty of care is, is one of the great things about being indie is that, you know, be, you yeah. never really fall out of our mindset. You never really fall out of our range. And, you know, it was a really unique person. He was kind. He was special. He was he was very formative for a lot of early Wired stuff. And, you know, thoughts and love go out to family and friends with that yeah. kind of, you Shouts know, that kind of update. There. You know, a real one. Yeah. A little bit before my time, I I, I never had the the pleasure. Um, you know that this was all from the 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 older heads and wired that uh, where we had a little gathering at the start of the week, kind of, of discussing this news. And you know, it, it, like we said, live that life that, that lets people remember you like that. Speaking of Harry way. Potter quizzes, did you ever find out what your Harry Potter house was? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and you know it's hard to follow sad news, but let's let, let, let's move and keep energy. You did, you did so good. That was great. I let's... didn't want to like cut that off no, with no, like no, a rock I and roll did, jingle. No, 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 Professor no, Dare. That, that was that was so good. You know what? You'd have probably loved that. You'd have absolutely <laughs> loved that. But um, but moving on, let, let's uh, keep the, the the energy and move into something a bit more positive. But um, just on the Harry Potter subject, no, I I never actually, I've never read or watched Harry Potter. I, I am completely yeah. Whoa! <laughs> do, yeah, yeah. This, do what the hell? I, I I am a really I am a really shit shit. Oh, are we like we are. On yeah, we are. To swear, you can do okay, it. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. Keep I think I everyone keep at home swore when they found out that news. They were like, "What the?" No. <laughs> um, but I'm just a really shit Brit, to be honest. Yeah. Like, like uh, I I don't like tea. I've never seen Harry Potter. Oh I've never read Harry God. Potter. Like, like honestly, Gary, what yeah. the hell? <laughs> I know, I know. It's, but but it's not for want of trying. Um, no, don't get me don't get me wrong. I know that um, you know the, the the whole Harry Potter universe has has kind of fallen into a little bit of yeah, you know, people have fought controversy. Yeah. People have fallen in and out of love with it uh, based on the content creators. Some people can separate art from the artist. Some can't. That's 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 how it goes. Um, but for me when harry potter started kind of kicking off and, and people were really um getting into it i, I was a little bit older because I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit dated uh, and at that point i was knee deep in um terry pratchett uh, novels and and the Discworld series so people were coming going like oh you should check out this harry potter stuff right like it's about this this kid and there's this a uh, school full of magic and wizards and i'm like yeah it's not the unseen university though is it really like it's not yeah I, I I've, I've got i've got that kind of genre covered in spades quite quite a bit yeah. here and, and by the time i kind of by the time it got big big i was like i'm, I'm like i'm like 30 you know what i mean i don't want to be yeah. the 30 year old getting into harry potter like that's right a, right that's on. a weird look so you know what if that's your bag by all means love it adore yeah. it but i i've never got i've never been into the um never been into the scene if you'd like say. to it, be a listener slash viewer based on psychoanalyzing <laughs> gary which is now gonna put you Ooh. under a harsh spotlight if, you, if you'd like to guess gary's house <laughs> You can email. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I, I, okay. Do you want? This is a, a weird, a weird thing. I have had one Harry Potter related thing. Uh-huh. Um, I have had one Harry Potter related thing, uh, which was I don't know if you know this about me, but back um, before COVID things and whatnot, and for many years, um, I was a roller derby player. And I did roller derby coaching, right, okay. um, which, which is yeah. I know it's a bit weird, right? It's yeah. a bit weird. It's yeah, a weird right. thing to fall into. Uh, but I did play in a Harry Potter themed uh, tournament where <laughs> at the beginning they basically got all the players together and then did like a, a hat ceremony or something. Yeah, where they put a hat on you right. yeah, and then distributed you out to about. teams. Mm-hmm. And based on that, was depending on which team you played on, yep. basically. And then you got the different color jerseys. So that did happen to me. And there is, I might, I might see if I can find it actually, and yeah. maybe, maybe get Curtis to throw a picture of me awkwardly sat under this hat in skating gear, going, "What the fuck is going on?" Um, yeah. But that would reveal what team I ended up in. So do you want this reveal now or go on? Yeah. Okay. It, it was Slytherin. <laughs> I don't a... know what that means. All right. All right. Well. 
It means a lot, actually. Means. I'm a Slytherin too. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, a sl- I'm a Slytherin too. Yeah, everyone in okay. my house is a Slytherin. So, <laughs> say no more. Um, let's go to wine propaganda. <laughs> Propaganda. Wow. Okay. Well, that that was a great. That I'm was. A, that, I'm, on, I'm on that bombshell. That was I'm a great intro. Um. Well, look. You know, we mentioned it's a quiet week, but apparently not for Wired. There's quite a lot of stuff that's been going on. To be there is, honest there is, and I, I have to admit, <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> right. I did. But, sorry. but the problem is, it right. doesn't. It doesn't fit. I've for the audio air, listeners right. of this podcast. <laughs> Gary has managed to source the propaganda hat that Steve fashioned just a few weeks ago. Aaron never wears it, but I think, you know, like what they say, the king doesn't need to say he's the king. It's kind of no, like that. Exactly. Aaron's just so comfortable, he doesn't even bother wearing it. He hat. doesn't. Like, Aaron just has, like, plus one propaganda hat as, like, a passive buff. He exactly. He, he was. Need, he's, he doesn't need it. It's a spiritual hat. And for those audio <laughs> listeners, to try and describe the hat, like, oh, in a word... Home pride, you know, like yeah. the little charred sauce. Although well, when Steve um, passed it over to me, um, he did say that when I wear it, I look a little bit clockwork orange. Um, which <laughs> yeah. there's also it's hard a, to tell because it's balancing on the headset yeah. right now. Um, there's, there's also so a bit does, of that. It does look a little bit more Mr. Ben than um, Mr. Than ben. Clockwork. That's another. Good, it, yeah, it, it that does. Was, yeah. But. If you listen, if you're only listening to this now. That's all you need to know, honestly. Yeah, yeah Mr. Ben, Home Pride, oh, Clockwork okay. Orange. You know, I'm just gonna hold it. I'm just gonna hold it up here, and we'll we'll just kind of. Okay, so our our, our subbed in <laughs> Minister of Propaganda, we've got, <laughs> quite a, we've got quite a lot of stuff on. Um, let's start with some very exciting news. So, um, I guess the uh, the 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 well, let, let's get the businessy stuff out of the way first, actually, because there's a lot of business stuff going on. Okay, wide straight to business. Straight to business. I'm a businessman. <laughs> it's, right? the it's the hat. It's yeah. the hat. I already feel more empowered. <laughs> All right. So next week is Develop. Um, obviously, big industry event. Uh, way more industry side focus. But yeah. co-founders Jason and Kevin are going to be at Develop next week. And we've been told that if you spot them at Develop and uh, you run up and use the secret coin, Oi, is that you? Uh, then you'll not only win five grand in cash, but uh, Jason will give you the keys to his house. It's true. Well, he can... <laughs> <laughs> the stakes are very high suddenly, aren't stakes they? Stakes are really I high. I hope they don't listen to this. Oh, uh, they don't. They're they too busy doing business. <laughs> exactly. this, can't, this can't get That's how they can afford so many houses to just give away like that, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, um, exactly. So, no, but honestly, they're like legitimately, if you do spot Jason uh, and Kevin out in the wild, uh, they are the movers and shakers that make the really cool things happen. Um, of the, you know, the game signings and the production side and all, all sorts of wonderful people to speak to, great people to get to know. And those kind of conversations lead to things like, I don't know, games existing. So, you know, see them, go introduce yourselves. They are always willing to chat. In a follow-up method, uh, Lord... <laughs> say Lord. I call people Lord by default, and it's yeah. the worst. I just then called him Lord Zulu, which which Lord, Lord Zulu. Zulu. No, he, he, he's going to be happy he, with that. He, he would he would have loved that. But uh, equal co-founding legend Leo is going to be at uh, first playable this week. Uh, the Italian uh, celebration of gaming, matchmaking, discussion, filled in general all things video games. Which, if you saw um, yesterday, uh, Martha is dead won an award on the first the start of first playable where they were hosting the ivgas the italian video game awards mm-hmm. where we were nominated for two with martha nominated for two most innov- innovative italian game easy for me to say uh <laughs> and best italian video game uh we won one not two uh which you know hot wheels took the the, the best italian video game which you know what that's they got do really uh, lead the way so they really do lead the way, um, and so congrats to, to Hot Wheels and the team that, that put that out. You know what? It, it's a it's a it's a great game. He, a heck of a lot of nostalgia around you know the, the actual IP as a whole. Really well put together. Um, yeah, you know I've seen a lot of love for Hot Wheels out there. So very worthy winners. Congrats to the studio and everyone involved. But Martha still won something, which is great. You know Martha like wins multiple, so many things. It multiple might as well be a award segment winning now. At this it, point. it is yeah. right? like 
and, and we're not inventing these either. It ain't like we've got Steve <laughs> out back just like randomly yeah. pulling. Ah, it's um, yeah. best looking vegetation in a video game in Italy, from Sweden. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's not like he's out there making up awards for us to win. You know that this this <laughs> this genuinely is that, that Luca and the team at LKA um, really did. You know, it's a five six year project. Uh, you know, in in the, in the indie space. That is legitimately almost unheard of for something to to have that length of time behind. You know, you think indie, you think really short, you know, year or two cycle, in you go, job done. But but they put their hearts and souls into that game, and you know, we are super privileged to be part of getting that story out there. And you know, the the the, the players, the fans, on the socials, they absolutely adore it. That the people that have played it, the streams, the content that we've seen being pushed out from it absolutely absolutely validates every part of that even without the awards um but it's always nice to have a couple of trophies in it really. it is yeah it's it pretty is. sick it makes, makes, makes it pretty good uh but anyway back to first playable that is all kicking off as of now you will be able to catch leo roaming around he's got his suitcase all packed up paddington bear style like a, yeah. an italian paddington bear give him a fist bump and uh have a chat with him if you find yourself out in italy over the next week he will be very happy to see you and finally There's because more. there more. is more everyone there is more gamescom is happening soon you mentioned earlier on jake that we've mm -hmm. got um a big old list of things coming up now that june is over gamescom is one of them uh, and this is broken into two this is two so mm. once again saying on the industry side of things if you're an industry type person and you want to speak to us you can find us in hall 3.2 Find us in 3.2. That's where we'll be. You'll find us in there. Come, book an appointment, say hi. Let's make magical things happen. But we're also going to have all of our games there for people to play. So Ooh. we're talking Tin Hearts. We're talking Last Worker. We're talking Gory. We're talking Arcade Paradise and Tiny Troopers, all fully playable in the indie arena for any of you. Roam in if you're at Gamescom. Come say hi. Come play our games. We'll be there. We yeah. might even literally be there. Who knows? We're not going to. I'll gonna, be there. We're not going to. Oh, can, can you sing it? Uh, you, what, are you thinking? Is that yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, the Friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go, on, go, on, go on, do it. Is it you know, was that the, the Friends <laughs> theme? No, no, no. I was thinking of I'll be there. Oh, right. I, I was gonna, yeah, okay. We went to two very different places. Yeah, that's the age thing again, isn't it? <laughs> it's the that's, age the, thing. That, that's the Harry it's Potter. The that's thing. the Harry Potter yeah. and Terry Pratchett divide. Yeah, no, that's it. That's In it. We may both be Slytherin, but it, <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah there's that, but there's, there's that levels little, to it. There's that little that little thing. Um, uh, but we may also, sorry to to cut you, mm -hmm. just to give people a tease because over the last couple of weeks we we kind of dropped. Um, little teasers about Arcade Paradise that we weren't supposed to. Yeah. Um. You know, we, we, we might have dropped things like dates about things we shouldn't have done and so on. And, you know, we, we didn't get in any trouble, but all I'm going to say is there's a reason why Steve isn't here this week. Mm. Um. You know. Yeah. A solemn moment. A solemn moment for Steve. Um, but no, uh, we may, on top of all of those games being playable in the Indie Arena booth, on top of industry folks being able to find us in 3.2 to you know talk mm -hmm. business well, we may be announcing a couple of things oh games comes the place to do it baby it might, we might be a couple of new things those things might be games those things might be not games those things i'm not going to tell you anymore i'm just going to say but that there is a very strong chance that there might be some new things for everyone to be excited for by the end of gamescom and that's even without you turning up and playing the games so if you're at gamescom come play our games if you're not at gamescom tune in because you you, you might you might learn well something. it was nice knowing you gary i look forward to i need to send you i need to send you this hat so that yeah. you You'll be do, joining Steve very week. soon, all right? Very, very, um, very good. So that's quite a okay. lot. There's, there's a lot of that's events lot. there, isn't there? And that's just the business side. There's still more propaganda to go, mate. That, there's it, still more. <laughs> go there's on. still more. I've still got two more bits of propaganda for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's gonna, Aaron might have to reapply for his job, <laughs> to be honest, at this point. Right? Well, while we're on the subject of Arcade Paradise, um, obviously last week we, we, we kind of yeah. announced, hey, guess what? There's a, re there's a release date, August 11th. It's coming. Uh, it's going to be out on all of the formats. There is a physical edition. We're very excited. That's quite literally just over a month away now. But on top of the release date announcement, we announced that there's going to be a little bit of a, a closed beta session for people to be, to be rocking and rolling with. 
Um, and nice. this is coming in the form of two little control groups. You might wonder, hey, what can you really do a month away from launch? Genuinely, you think of betas there for like multiplayer games that are done way in advance, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're, we're indie, right? And you think back to the Falcon here, way back, way back. We're talking a couple of years ago now. We ran a, a wonderful closed beta uh, with Thomas Heller, the creator, and the, the information that we got from that genuinely helped shape not just the game for launch, but the immediate laundry list of things that we needed to look at for, for after launch, right? Um, we know the game's great. We think the game's in great shape, but there's nothing quite like getting the game in the hands of people in right. order to, to really, really, you know, y'all break things in ways that we don't even know or imagine. You come up with suggestions that we wouldn't have even thought of, you know, it's, it's that wonderful dynamic of gamer and creator. So uh, this Saturday and Sunday is going to be the very first closed group. Uh, mm. You can apply for this. There is a means to do so. Curtis, you're going to do the thing. Um, I don't know where I'm going to be cropped, so I'm just going to do like the, the Monkey Island insurance guy salesman just poking around randomly, and Curtis can put it somewhere. Um, but there is a discord.gg forward slash arcade paradise. We'll take you to the discord where the beta sign up information forms yeah. and everything along that nature. Uh, will be available for you to do. And you sign up to that before this weekend. We'll throw you a key. You'll get a couple of days to dive in and play a good chunk of the game. This is more than anyone has been able to play before. If you played the demo at PAX, if you played it during Steam Next Fest, there's more arcade in okay. here than you've ever right. had access to before. So go in, play it, enjoy it, live it, share it. I mean, we this is a beta content creators go nuts all right They're like y'all are going to be able to stream this mm. you're going to be able to make videos on, on this and what's more you're going to get a lot more of the soundtrack in this and the soundtrack absolutely slaps wow, yeah the soundtrack is and amazing. we own it all we, we own it all we, all of this has been created for the game so there's no dmca worries all right you don't need to worry about getting struck with any of that stuff but yes beta running this weekend we're going to be doing a second run of it next weekend so whether you find the time this weekend or next weekend, you can go sign up, let us know, and we'll 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 get yeah. the arcade paradise in your hands. And finally, for our piece of propaganda. The hits keep oh, on coming. The they hits keep, keep on uh, coming. Oh, they don't stop coming. Let me just take a sip of water because it's very warm in here. The all-star break. Obligatory all-star lyric break. All-star break, yep. Yeah. Hey. It's a cold <laughs> place, and they say it's it's colder. Um <laughs> I wish it was no. cold. It's boiling <laughs> here, by the way. Oh, yeah, by the way. yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you're in that little um, booth for I'm the audio booth. listeners. I do, I do yeah. have aircon in here, but I mean, you know, the news is just so hot that, yeah. you know, the temperature got, just got rises one more piece. naturally. But we've got one more piece of propaganda for you. Uh, and this is, those of you may remember, many moons ago, back when uh, we did our very first online event, Wide Direct, Back in 2021, start of mm -hmm. 2021, we announced uh, Black Label, which is our celebration of everything to do with a game, whether it's an older game, a new game, whatever. Like we're, we're talking from the music to the art to the game itself to you know the developers that created it. We announced a, a special collector's version of uh, Victor Vran uh, as our very first game in this series. And the idea behind it is it's a, a collection of games that are released in the same kind of packaging format all containing like bits and goodies and like a miniature collector's edition but in the way that you'd collect like books on a shelf you know what i mean you, you'd get yeah. book one book two prestigious book three, like book three, encyclopedias and stuff yeah exactly yeah. we're doing these for our games and we announced the first two during 2021 uh and when hey these will be with you by you know the end of the year blah 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 blah, blah. uh actually you know what COVID was a way bigger hit on a lot of pipelines mm. for creation um, for physical products than anyone even anticipated at that point. Uh, you add things like Brexit into the, the case of things where all of a sudden international deals and shipping and partners go a little bit wonky and the entire thing got a little bit sidelined. Uh, which, you know, it's been it's, it's been tricky to keep everyone updated. A lot of people went and ordered these. You know, they're, they're awesome. Fans of the game, fans of collectors, fans of just owning nice things. Yeah. Uh, all went, I want me a piece of that. And they ordered them. And everyone's been sat kind of waiting for updates. <clears> as well, <throat> super, super, super happy uh, to reveal that. You know what? 
production is is finished now on on these we we have been sharing on the socials um if this goes out on friday we'll have announced this yesterday so this news is out there see you uh, have that little fear don't you welcome to yeah, there, there, there's, there's a moment there's yeah. a moment there's a moment um, the, the news should be out there uh, if you check our websites you can see our friend bob um doing a very nice uh, rundown uh, there's a nice blog up there kind of showcasing fresh from the factory the finished products Oh, All wicked. their glory, each individual item from them. Uh, the first two are now in this format. So Victor Varan, Town of Light, the first two black labels are now done. <clears throat> they're, they're, they're ready for getting sent out to the world for everybody that ordered. Uh, we're going to be getting our own, obviously, shipped over to here. This is how fresh these are off the lineup. We haven't even had them turn up to the office yet, but they're done. They're ready. Once we've got them, they're going to be sent out to everyone that has ordered um, which is obviously great news. Thank you all so much for your patience on that. And now that that pipeline is set and now that we're happy, we'll obviously be able to take feedback, make any adjustments in case we want to uh, from the beautiful people for mm -hmm. future ones. And we'll be announcing the very next Black Label, number three, very, very soon. But once again, we'll probably put a link in the description for this. Go check out the Black Label. Um, if you want to order, you can order now. We're, now that the production is finished, we're opening up orders because uh, the first batch sold through so quickly that we didn't want to carry on selling them in the pre-order state until we'd basically you know, got this done. So anyway, yes, Black Label, those of you that ordered, they're going to be with you very soon. Those of you that haven't ordered, go to the website. You'll be able to see them and you'll go, I want one of those. And it'll be with you a lot quicker. And everyone get ready for the announcement of the third. I that was and so that... fresh that it wasn't even on my notes that one. Oh really? Yeah, that, that one that one came in pretty. I probably should have told you about that. <laughs> that no, no, that's good. Fresh. That's good. That's and clean good. and clean. That's good. Well, listen, thank you very much for the. That was very, very, very stacked. I'll put the hat back on uh, to take it back off. Now. There we go. There we go. Thank you very Hello, much, propaganda. Gary, propaganda minister. Um, we've got. That's what I'm here for. Well, listen, I think I, I can give you a bit of Victor Fran trivia that I prepared, actually. Um, oh, you pre oh, wait, so you didn't even know no, no, about no. that you came yeah, prepared? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm right this on my feet. This is why you're a professional, Jake. Well, this is why you're a professional. exactly. Let's run with them and I'll give you all the information you need to know about what's happened in the world this week. Uh, in games, we're not talking about Boris Johnson. No. No sweet stuff from Google. Ooh. It's the part of the podcast where we talk about all things unwired. What, what's the opposite of wired? Like de-wired? I don't know. Anyway, we're, we're all propagandized up. You've got a diet of nearly 100% wired news. So I will try and... A, a balanced diet is apparently very important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm here to you, try and balance... You finished the main it, course. Now it's time for your dessert. Your but... dessert in this case is... Um, or lots of leaks and... <laughs> Fraud, fraudsters. <laughs> what, what, what if you don't like leak? <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. Crispy leaks. Now, I've got, I've got uh, a couple of things that I would like to talk about today, and I'm not really sure the order that I want to do it in, but I think we'll go fast first. So, oh, okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna hit you with this bit of information. All right. So this week, summer games done quick, which is the summer equivalent of Games Done Quick, famous gaming charity speedrun event happened. As usual, it was a huge success, so it concluded on Sunday, and it had successfully raised about $3 million for charity. Doctors wow, well done. Well yeah. done. Like, like, holy, holy hell, fantastic. $3 million like that, boom. It ended like on a, a huge grand finale of uh, everybody's like you know topical love-hate relationship game, Elden Ring. And somebody completed it in 33 minutes and 58 seconds. Wow. Good, huh? I, so, I think it, it took me that long to install it. Yeah. It, <laughs> My hard drive is slow. Like, 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 yeah, <laughs> exactly. That, that's, oh. that's the amount of time that people spend reacting to the time that they died to the first yeah. boss that, that's 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 about how long it took me to do my character creation you, you yeah I mean? right like, that's, honestly, that's, honestly like, yeah. i've got to get the nose <clears throat> just big enough and the skin color just purple bluey green enough yeah you, you know like you've hey. got to make a monstrosity in elden Ring. exactly Otherwise, what are you doing anyway sorry so i've got no 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 absolutely i've got some um i've got some news coming coming in hot so there was a lot of cool games that was shown. Uh, Zelda, Ocarina of Time was completed in 53 minutes. Pokemon uh, Diamond Pearl in 17. 
Super Mario 64 in an hour. Wind Waker in three hours. Um, Ulahan was there. Dutch guy. He was Ooh. playing a Lord of the Rings. But a little bit of wired trivia for you. He is the world record holder for finishing Victor Fran in the fastest time. Ah, wow, really? See? We need to. We need to talk to him. He, we need to get him. A, we need to get him a black label and get him on the show or something. That'd he be completed cool. Victor Fran in thirty-seven minutes, and there's the current world record holder. So there we go. We need to, we need to get him on. <clears throat> we, need to that. we need to get him on the show. Get him a black yeah. label and get him to talk about like the it's, game. Maybe well, yeah, and, and speedrunning cool. in general because yeah, it's, be it's cool. a crazy topic, right? Like <clears throat> before we go into the. Uh, the topic at hand i just wanted to ask you gary just out of interest like have you ever like got into speedrunning or anything like that or is... so i've never got into speedrunning um itself like like personally as in like me trying to do it uh because it's just mm. it's it's not not my not my skill set um i don't no. have the patience but one thing i adore um is obviously uh games on quick and so on a because it's just fascinating seeing uh how people achieve all these things but be because of the, the the charity side of it as well. Like mm, the, the, nothing makes yeah. me happier than when gaming is used for like a massive force for good, and and it's yeah just, right the best frick. <laughs> There's enough negativity about the, the 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 space as a whole that any like concrete no check it out here's the thing and it's just wholesome and it's just great and look at what you've all done is just like it, it warms the heart. But I do love my favorite type of speedrunning content is when they get developers to watch people breaking their games to yeah. speed run there's some Reacting great video it. documentaries yeah. out there from like the the, the half-life teams and uh, from the the doom eternal i believe it was mm -hmm. recently had one <clears> where the devs <throat> yep. like obviously just sit down and watch mm. the speedrunners, and you, you kind of see them yep. nervously glancing at each other as they like switch to a weapon and fall through the floor yeah. and like you'll see a dev looking at another mm. one being like you were supposed to fix that why is it that thing? Like, 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 like you, you, you'll see them like just watching yeah. all of their carefully crafted worlds being broken apart. And some of them adore destroyed. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some exactly. of them adore it, and they're like, "Oh my god, yeah, wow! I didn't even think of that." And some of them are like, "Oh, this is the worst. I'm so bad at my job." Uh, but it's I love watching that. It's the best. Yeah, it really is a thing, isn't it? And that's it. Yeah, like it must be a weird, like bittersweet thing for a developer thinking, "Oh, yeah. you've skipped all the good stuff that we <laughs> spent five the, years yeah. on." Um, There's a narrative there. <laughs> oh God! Like, it's... well, for me, I didn't know if I was going to enjoy watching it, even because it's kind of like, why would I want to watch someone play Silent Hill in seven minutes? Like, but some of the speedrunners have got a lot of like really good trivia under their belt. So I watched. Mm -hmm. Um, I got into it when my youngest daughter was about. I don't know how old was she? She would have been about nine months old, something like that. And uh, I used to, in between naps, which were about two hours long, I would. I, well, it started. It started <laughs> off. I, I, I had. The, I had. The, I had the Resident Evil. You, you were speedrun sleeping at any. Yeah, percent, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, I just appreciate anyone. Who... <laughs> well, no, I, I used to. I used to play Resident Evil Two, the remake. It had just come out, so it would have been in hmm. February. So she, yeah, she would have been about yeah, about nine, ten months old. And I and I completed it in about two hours, right? Hmm. Which is it's okay. It's good. It's That's okay, good. and then I was like, "But it's, it's it's pretty it's pretty short." And then I was like, "Cool." And then I ran. I f I finished it. I did it on all of the difficulties of all the characters. And I was like, "Hmm." But what about what was Resident Evil Three even about? So I was like, trying. I was I went on YouTube and there's like a 15 hour video or something. So I was like, I just watched a speed run of it to remind myself. And then that uh, that was about February. So I think it was awesome. Games done quick was on. Yeah. And I ended up just getting into it, and, and suddenly I found myself quite interested in in all the runs, and especially some games have got runs with almost like random elements. Like I remember the the game, yeah, the, the randomizer ga stuff is great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or or this, like certain games are really like this is going to happen here, then this is going to happen here, then this phase will happen. But there's certain games that just have that randomized element built in. So I always remember watching somebody called the Mexican Runner play Cuphead. Right, he did, okay. which is a game that you can't really quite predict because the way that the bullets are and the way that things yeah. interact. With you. So it was like watching somebody just really good complete Cuphead in like an hour, and I think he was trying to go for like a no hit run of Cuphead. Right, and I was like, what? So I, I got really into it, and I love it for for especially for like older games because the amount of trivia and like the memes. It's like you know, like Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, where like people just like throw things at the screen. There's bits that the fans love, but the normies just don't understand. It's like that with some of that. Some of the classic, like, Ocarina of Time moments, there's crowd participation. So, yeah. 
interesting, interesting topic, and and and, and definitely a a strange uh, phenomenon that is just like, like you say, been harnessed for good. However, yeah. oh no. However. Oh no! You did that thing. Mm. You did that thing. You did the crime show thing where they're like they were best friends. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. they weren't. You know, and everywhere everything goes yeah. like grayscale. But it's and not all sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> oh, so no. there's a uh, yeah, there was a bit of an interesting situation this uh, week where GDQ had to ban a guy for faking a world record. Um, wow. So like, bit of a weird one because during the pandemic. GDQ continued entirely digitally. So everybody was just like live streaming their stuff. Which I was kind of always thinking. When, can't people just be like playing like a video or something? Anyway, turns out that that's exactly what this guy did. Uh, no. Mech- Mechorazium got the world record no. on Metal Gear Solid Revengeance beating, well, themselves because they were the last record holder. But now I'm questioning everything. Maybe they were never good. Uh, but it turns out, yeah, <laughs> they faked it and they got perma banned. So what happened was, well, well, first of all, how did he get found out? Well, on the subreddit, the speedrun subreddit, because of course there's a subreddit for that. Of course. They started to notice varying discrepancies. Like, So Blade Wolf is the name of the DLC for this, okay? So it was right. during this part where things all started moving. So compared to his run of the base game, suddenly the DLC bit contained almost like no keyboard sounds and there was a moment here it is this is the smoking the smoking gun moment where he removes his right hand from the mouse while the in-game camera continues to move and uh yeah well he eventually at first when he he was live on on gdq he got the world record everyone was celebrating and his reaction was and i quote can we not like use the world record stuff it's very misleading it assumes what happened here is the fastest time when, in fact, someone else could have done it faster. <laughs> um, then why do it in the first place? I know, what? yeah. Exactly. Oh, no. Yeah, he's like, okay. he's, he's like, I'm not really into this speedrun stuff. That's what it sounds like he's saying. Do you know what I mean? He's like, I just, he, I just entered the speedrunning thing and got the world record yeah. via cheating, but I don't want you all to acknowledge yeah. that I entered or did it. But it's but like, no why big deal. do it? It's, to- it's totally <laughs> no, no big, big deal. deal. So yeah, anyway, he got caught wow. out and uh, yeah, he admitted himself that it was in fact pre-taped. So what he did was, he, so he, he was doing it in segments. So it wasn't all, he didn't do the whole thing right. in one go. So he was he, basically like streamlining, get, getting that streamlined run by doing something as optimal as possible and then doing the next part optimal and then putting them together. Slicing them together, the, exactly. Yeah. Oh, so man. actually there are parts of GDQ and there's parts of the speedrun community called that there's like segmented runs they're called yeah, no no they genuinely are and, and even yeah. within like you get machine assisted runs and whatnot like like there's, yeah. there's, there's entire communities dedicated to hey you've programmed a, a machine to basically do all of this in crazy ways better than that person's machine like there are groups for this kind of thing yeah like... it, it, exactly so yeah he did it all live uh oh. said it was all live and then that was shame it. and I, i'll end on this gdq's uh little i don't know quote eulogy okay, I'm ready this for is this. absolutely ready for this. unacceptable and attempts to undermine the integrity of the speedrunner community that we love and support the exact result they desired was unclear from the document but it's clear that they believed we would not be willing to speak about their behavior they of course being mechazarium sorry mm. however we believe it is in the community's best interests to know why this run was removed by gdq we have removed mechazarium's runs from our youtube archive and will not permit him to run in the future so there we go wow. turns out reddit wins again um crime but, doesn't pay try crime Oops. doesn't pay and and uh, in the words of mechazarium can we not like use world record stuff it's very misleading so there we go <laughs> so there we go so yeah so shouts out uh everybody else involved um yeah or, or him um, i guess if you, you raise some money those of you doing clean runs yeah. and raising money and keeping it within the spirit like it's easy it's easy yeah. to mock that this kind of thing you know you, you might turn around and go why do people care so much about but yeah that's what makes life great is being able to find weird things that you care about and if you're the kind of person that cares about speed running and you've decided this is your thing this is your bag then you know well, what? that's actually the thing that was a bit like uh, for me was I found out that he like like the the speed run that the Mecca did was like a reward because like that's the one thing I do really enjoy about GDC that mm. you, you know it's the passionate community but like the donation stuff is really cool yeah. 
like you know so, that, good. That, so like yeah you know the, the most common thing is obviously when you donate money you get a shout out and stuff like that yeah. you can you know say like you know go mecca go or whatever or, but you can you can put your money towards different goals like you know should we save the animals or not should we um play wind waker or should we play elden ring and like a lot of people can yep. vote on which games get played so some of them are quite impromptu decisions so anyway, this yeah. was one it was voted for. So I don't like that people spent money. Well, they didn't spend money towards this. The money all goes no, towards but, but, but borders. They, they 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 were doing a good thing that yeah. then got co opted into a bad thing, and that's exactly. that's that's so, not. So there we go. But listen, I I'd encourage everybody to check out Games Done Quick if you've never seen speedrunning before. Like I was didn't really give it any thought or time. I just thought right, like I don't care very much. Wind Waker was amazing. Why would I want to see someone do it in three hours? But actually, it's good. And do you know what it's kind of like? It's kind of like a little recap video. You know, like before yeah. you go and see a Marvel film and you're like, oh, yeah. what happened in the last 50 Spider-Man yeah, films? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, actually, I actually saw, I actually saw, not that I want to turn unplugged into, hey, check out this meme I saw on the internet. But I, I did <laughs> see a meme on the internet, so check it out, uh -huh. of um, like some shit post that was, you know, uh, guys in, you know, 2060, you know, realizing they need to watch seven thousand uh, films, twenty five hundred TV shows, and read mm -hmm. seventeen comics to you know see it, the latest Spider Man or something like that. And it was like, oh god, just, how is this going to stack oh, up eventually? Like yeah, at some exactly, at some yeah, point, you have to reset, either right? stop or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So check that out, and maybe a good place to start. Oh, now listen, I've just done some very quick googling, speed run it, oh, but okay. Eula Hans, uh, world record Victor Vran. Uh, speedrun isn't on the internet but there is a speedrun of victor vran in 39 minutes by some guy called vincent so maybe start there and have vincent a look at victor vran. Vran. although vincent if you've vran. not played victor vran i'm not sure it's a good representation of how the full game should be played no but maybe but if you've not played victor vran yeah by the book label version yeah, yeah exactly and then you can watch this after as a treat <laughs> as a all treat right. all right <laughs> so um next uh i'd like to talk about leaks Okay, mm. not the food this time again. Oh, I know. Yeah, this it's is getting about... me a lunchtime. I'm hungry. This the, is a problem. This is you mentioned leaks. This well, I get out of the way now. I don't think there's any okay. other food uh, related uh, segues we can make afterwards. So this will this will be it now. Uh, okay. So Nintendo. Aaron's not here, so I thought someone has to bring Nintendo into this podcast yeah, that's every fair. week. <laughs> so it's me this time. Tick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so look. A couple of years ago, there was something called the Giga Leak. Again, not a gigantic, not, not like a farmer's market special. No. It, was this, it was this incredible amount of data that got leaked from Nintendo. Uh, and yeah, it had loads of, it was stolen data, right? It had loads of prototypes of like Ocarina of Time, Super Mario Kart, like on the SNES, mm. N64 games. And it was really fascinating to a lot of people because uh, Nintendo are very secretive about what they do and yep. stuff like that. So, like, yeah, it was crazy because there was loads of documentation, loads of internal discussions, loads of everything. So, you know, there was there was uh, correspondence about the GameCube. Should it be called the GameCube? Or about the DS, the, 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 yes, the discussions about the screen. There was mentions about the development process of games. It was loads of quite interesting and, and strange stuff. Um, okay. And that is no surprise, but what is new is that Nintendo have kind of like addressed it finally after a couple of years and said that oh wow they are now taking a variety of initiatives to address information security threats and vulnerabilities um Ooh. and so basically they've just upped their ante completely and they've hired after that they hired loads of security people and uh yeah employee training they've spent millions and millions on making sure so, so is this a is this a like retroactive they're going to be going after people that shared anything from the giga leaks or is this a hey we're acknowledging that there is a problem and where that's what it was moving yeah. forward to address it. is that what it, okay well, they kind of did it in a very proud way of like oh mm. that thing well this is what we've already done so at the time okay. at the time they were pretty aggressive with it yeah i was about to say because nintendo i mean you know as as is there right at the end of the day uh, ip is ip property is property um mm -hmm. but that they they can be pretty determined when it comes to things like you know fan made things or remasters or right, content yeah. created off the back or or leaks you know it doesn't take much to get things snapping no, and no, uh, you know, all of a sudden you find yourself kind of 
on on the wrong kind of attention. So yeah, you're right. If you if you want to know how the original story ended, uh, a twenty year old, twenty one year old actually, twenty one year old guy who leaked it all was arrested for three years and ordered to pay two hundred and fifty nine thousand three hundred and twenty three U.S. dollars in restitution to Nintendo. So off the book, he could have offered to do it in turnips. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Just really tried. That's, just, I'm uh, sure he did. I've like, got this farm. <laughs> it's 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 very crazy because yeah, like um, essentially like like, it, and if you want to know kind of off the back of that, like what happened with that data, some fans restored Super Mario World's soundtrack using some old samples. They managed to create a couple of unfinished songs. A community modder spent nine months repairing an early prototype of Super Mario Kart, like the prototype of it, where it was all kind of like um, bird's eye view or whatever. So that I guess it's kind of cool. Like it's been good for like preservation and um, emulation. But again, a very difficult subject. I'd like to speak to somebody who preserves video games one day. Uh, I would love to hear that conversation. Like it's such a very weird position. Um in the industry because when you genuinely look at things especially you know um collectors or anyone that yeah. just wants to kind of keep track of that stuff there the, the really isn't like you've got a few video game museums scattered around you, you you've got in you know online databases of things yeah but in general you know there's even like ps1 games that are so in limited supply that you will pay like in some people's cases like a year's bloody salary to get a hold of which is which is bonkers you, you know what i mean like that's obviously a weird thing for an industry that it is is as young on the scale of things as ours is comparatively that that kind of scarcity and documentation can be can be so hard to come by and you know there are fascinating things if you, if you look back to you know the not not quite leak side i guess but you look at like the you mentioned resident evil earlier the the early resident evil um for um Mm-hmm. versions or even even earlier than that the, the early resident evil 2 um betas and and then kind of the early builds of that that were very different to what you eventually got that stuff is fascinating you look at that stuff and you're like wow what 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 could that have ended up like like that's so cool that stuff leaks out and p- fans passionate fans pick it apart and they're like oh that would have been cool we can see why this didn't happen or why that didn't happen and retroactively it can lead to some really fascinating discussions especially when developers or, or or publishers acknowledge it you know and go oh oh you know this leak yeah totally well you can see that in this you know we had this particular feature and here's why we opted not to go with it in the end and that's all fascinating but that's crazy isn't it but you can 100 percent understand why that stuff is kept under lock and key you know like, yeah. like the, you, you look at deals that that get made and fall through you look at builds that get made and never come to light you look at things that get most of the way done and then fall apart i mean there was that was it Duke Nukem forever recently there was a, a, a mm-hmm. leak of the, the i was gonna Duke ask Nukem you forever. yeah i was gonna ask like, you if you can remember any yeah yeah yeah, yeah there, there was the, the 2001 mm-hmm. build i believe like back before it migrated fully to unreal yeah and and people are now going back and retroactively trying to build out the rest of that game from what is in there and legally morally should they do that probably not it's crazy, but it's fascinating it? that this it thing is. is never going to exist and because of this leak some enthusiasts might find themselves able to put together a duke Nukem forever that the world never got it is, and it, you can't it's deny crazy. that that's kind of fascinating right like that would be cool some of the leaks have been quite you know i've got some different examples of some leaks here mm. so we can determine all right well here's one that's kind of related <clears throat> golden eye right they yep. had like a they had a, a version of it that never came out like the hd remaster like it was supposed mm. to come out i think on the 360 it never did or something mm. everyone wondered where it was turns out yeah this is quite God, quite mad I, dev- I tucked my, my trousers into my socks. The, the developer the uploaded the developer uploaded the entire game in a zip file called goldeneyehd.zip and put it on the <laughs> archive.org since 2008. And it was only discovered about a year ago. So someone just thought, oh, is this it? And it's it. Wow. It's the fully playable game that never, ever was ever released. But the full zip has been hidden, not hidden, in plain sight. I mean, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Like, if you are, if if you've worked on something like that, and you're like, 
yeah. I want to get this out there. It's never going to come out. I think it should go out there. You don't send an email to someone going, hey, by the way, here's the goal. You, you don't want to leave a paper trail, yeah, basically. Just upload it so go, go out there, <laughs> upload it, leave it. Someone will find it eventually. It might be yeah. 12 years later, but someone will find it. Like So that's, so that's yeah. one that's a bit like, it not, doesn't seem very nefarious. All right. Yeah. I, I've got one that's like, don't know where this falls on the scale, but I'll bring okay. it up for the, for the folks ready. at home who might want to, you know, throw back a couple of years. E3 2018. Can you remember the famous Walmart Canada website? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Walmart. Oh. For those that don't know, Walmart uh, Canada, oh. Walmart.ca just had a list of, like, games that were coming up soon. Like, you know, like uh, stock yep. photos and stuff. Like, chief among them was Rage 2. That was, like, the, the quite famous one because, like, the Rage Twitter account was, like, taking the piss out of them, basically. And uh, a lot of people were joking about it. But there was a new Assassin's Creed, Borderlands 3. There was quite a lot of games that were all at E3. So Walmart yeah. kind of basically leaked E3 a couple just of years Just was ago. like, hey, yeah, but these are coming soon, right? As in ready to order. Yeah, yeah, just stick them up there. And then, vomp, yeah, everyone's, everyone's fire stolen immediately. So that that's uh. morally bit, again, it seems yeah. like wrong place, wrong time, maybe. I, I'm, yeah, get, I mean, I, I'll do two more that, that get slowly more. Go. This let's one's go. a bit of a strange one. I don't know if you can remember this. I do, but at the time, not many people cared about this game. I mean, look, people did care about this game, but not as much as they were about to. CD Projekt Red, Google Drive. Don't know if you know what I'm about. Yeah, six yeah, six yeah, months God. before The Witcher 3. So The Witcher 1 yeah. and 2 had come out. They had fans. They certainly had fans, but yeah. I don't think any game has fans like The Witcher 3. Anyway, some CD Projekt Red's employees, employees of the month, their Google Drive was made public and loads of stuff just, just in there that, that people just yeah. could root around. There was the ending of the game, the ending of the game six months before, loads of monsters, some are unused to this day, concept art, some really cool stuff. I think a lot of it found itself in in like collector's editions eventually. So, yeah. But there was like the full bestiary, you know, and yeah. yeah, that, but that was somebody had left their front door unlocked. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a fear. It's a genuine fear. Honestly, I'm sure you have between even outside mm -hmm. because you know, you don't yeah. just do bang in podcasts. You do a lot of stuff with a lot of people. Yeah. And every time like you send an email, you receive a file, you send something somewhere. There's always a little heart flutter for a second of, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But Even on this podcast when we're talking yeah. about stuff, we this podcast comes out on a Friday, but we normally record it early in the week. And it's always yeah. that like, Ooh. and oh, of course oh, this has been oh. announced. And then you go, because you... especially sometimes when it has been, because things move, things are fluid, right? So you'll yeah. be like, oh, this is going out on Thursday. So we'll be cool to talk about it because it's going out on Friday. And then on Thursday, it's like, oh no, we've got to move this till next week. And you're like, no, no, and we've exactly. already talked. Oh, and that's God, what keeps like... that's what keeps you in check, that fear. Yeah. I'm glad that I've got it in a way. So, yeah. all right, here's Makes one. I feel it... alive. I'll end on this highest profile leak I've got. Okay, this is the best leak I've yeah. got for you guys at home. Hit me. <clears throat> Half-Life 2. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Half Life that, I mean, that, Two. That was the biggie, wasn't it? Like that was that was the biggie. And I don't know if you know how the story ends, but it's quite. Explosive. I don't know how the story ends. I remember the the story for me. So let me let me tell you. This was from my perspective as a yeah. young child. Yeah. I say young. I was in college, I guess. But when Half Life Two was well out, be a there. child. Yeah. And it was it was the game. Like like if you played games on a PC, Half Life was the standard. You played Counter Strike as a result of being. You know, Half Life, mm -hmm. you know, the, the whole ecosystem around. For, for those of you that are maybe a little bit younger that don't understand why Half Life's a big thing, like, like Valve, even before Steam, nailed that ecosystem of single player narrative adventure that, that kind of really was above anything else on at its time and multiplayer mm -hmm. component that kept you within the, the Lupin system. Um, and Half Life 2 had been, they'd been, you know, as, as we all did, we got our news through magazines and yeah, secondhand information on and websites. And for young people, a magazine's kind of like a website, but printed out. It's okay. like toilet paper you can read. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Half-Life 2 had been rumored and kicking around for a long time, and then all of a sudden, footage and a beta, so to speak, just appeared 
on the internet and it and to to give context like magazines back then behaved how websites behave now so if screenshots and a video of something called half-life 2 leaked online you best believe the next week the next month magazines all ran it they did like it, it's propaganda like they mm -hmm. they are like we yeah. are going to put front page half-life 2 revealed leaked blah 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 like it was it was relentless it was ruthless magazines did definitely ran hard for that stuff and it was incredible the visuals looked unlike anything you'd ever seen there was a giant tentacle monster uh, ripping, I remember a combine soldier is getting ripped by this giant tele. You're looking at it, you're like, this is the gaming is literally never going to get better than this. What the heck? Like, look at this, this looks incredible. And then 80% of the stuff wasn't in the game <laughs> when it came out. And you're like, well, no, yeah, it's... and that's where my story ends with that. That's well, all no, I that's a very it. good story. So, let me just pick up right where you left off then. So, despite yeah, there being me. so much missing content. It's worth just noting that Half-Life 2, especially for some of our younger listeners, it came out in 2004 and is widely still considered the, the best PC game, if not the best game ever made. It's up there. It's, yeah. it's like up there with like Ocarina of Time. And most mm -hmm. PC players who were around to remember it. And can I tell you something? I got a Steam Deck recently and I downloaded Half-Life 2 as as as... You know, as I should. As you should, as you should. And it's still being patched and updated. The graphics yeah. are still phenomenal, and the yeah. game plays amazing still. Now, I'm not a big fanboy of this sort of thing. I just no. appreciated it at the time. I played it on the original Xbox, and then I haven't played it since. And I've yeah. got to say, it still holds up. So, amazing. Uh, I, I think I think what a lot of people do get confused at, not to spin too far from the, the leaked story, but, yeah. the, you know, you do see quite often that discourse of Half-Life 2 wasn't, isn't really like in a modern setting half-life 2 mm. isn't really that great um and i think what you know you, you must take into account what it was at the time a lot of things we take for granted now like characters that are semi semi decently written um you, you know combat focus games that actually do have some kind of narrative to them mm -hmm. um even things like physics um physics and games like the, the source engine was genuinely really the first full-on the, the first time that you put a brick on a plank of wood balanced on a bucket and it behaved like a seesaw in half-life was a, a fucking mind-blowing moment it was literally like like you shoot a barrel and a combined soldier ragdolls over a wall and then his arm slumps over it and his body kind of dangles a little bit and then you shoot him in the legs and they wiggle back and forward as they would and you go that's it that's that's oh, hadn't been uh, done before in no, in, in it, that kind it, of way, exactly. And, and and that's why Half Life Two became such a thing. Like, not only was it a sequel to you know uh, one of the first real heavy narrative driven shooters, um, visually it was next level. Like physics had never really been done that reliably outside of very scripted set pieces before. To see this level of physics happening just in general gameplay at your control, yeah. the world as a playground. Like Half Life Two was revolutionary in a lot of ways that we take for granted. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you know, it, no, it, so, it, like oh. two thousand and four was a very seminal year for games, right? It had like mm. World of Warcraft, Halo Two, San Andreas, Metal Gear Solid Three, Fable, and Half Life mm. Two. Was Devil May Cry three Ex exactly like like, like 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 I remember going to game and buying Devil May Cry three and Metal Gear three on the same day and being like it doesn't get better than this what, what a, a, what a life. time so there we go and Half Life two was big so can you imagine then Valve was sitting on this game knowing its potential originally however it was due out late two thousand and three and it, mm. it was it was brought out at E three that summer E three two thousand and three um. However, yeah, it didn't come out until the very end of 2004. And, and Valve were quiet about it. That 2003 issue was quiet. So here's the kind of the, this is the, the probably the most nefarious leak because it wasn't a leak. It was a bit of a heist. So more than a year before it came out, a German hacker called Axel Gimb hacked That's into Valve. Great hacker name. That's a great Axel hacker Gimb. name. Yeah. I yeah, played him on yeah. Streets of Rage. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, he hacked into I... the game. He <laughs> He found the game's source code and uh, popped it online. And it, he, so this is quite funny because he ended up feeling really guilty about it. And then he sent an email to Gabe Newell directly confessing it was him and asked for a job, which is like, you hear a lot of this, don't you? These guys are asking for a job. How did Valve react? <gasps> Sentenced him to two years in prison. So they no, arrested him. <laughs> also, also, <clears throat> I mean, 
Yeah. Fuck around, find out. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, yeah, like, like, exactly. You, know, you can't like, just break into somebody's house no, and then be no, like, I do feel bad. Can we be friends instead? You yeah, know what I mean? Like, so, so there we go. Now, <laughs> so listen, I mean, that's the that's the, the highest profile leak, I suppose. And it ends in a funny way of like, friends? And Valve are like, no. No. <laughs> yeah, like, handshake, into jail, off you go. And, exactly. Now, now, and yeah, I mean, wow, what an ending. Uh, I wasn't aware that's where that... I, I thought they literally were just like, oh, we have no idea how this stuff got out. And I guess, yeah, no, no, it was... So. Yeah, it was, a, it was an attack by uh, Axel Gemb. So there we go. Wow. Now I want to get I want I want to kind of speed run through this one because there's not okay. much to say. Hey. And you're a nice guy, Gary, and I feel like it's a bit mean spirited to go into it. Um, okay. Everybody knows why it's stance on NFTs. You've seen the stickers. You've seen the viral yeah. tweets. However, yeah. really, I just wanted to bring it up because it is the biggest news story of the week. But it's not. It's, uh, it's a non-story, yeah. really, isn't it's it? It's a non-story. It is. It is. We're, we're, we're just we're just giving the facts. It, we're giving the yeah. facts. Giving okay. the facts. We'll we'll try and stay. So, we'll keep our opinion on Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Digital bullshit. NFTs out out of here. Yeah. Um, we'll be the know, bigger we'll, man. We'll, 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 we'll be the bigger <laughs> man. We won't we, we won't point out. All right. That okay. Uh, yeah. So I'll. I mean, I'll, I'll read Kotaku's subheader, which doesn't seem uh, as as full of decorum as us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So, very um, very yeah. open, I think. So there was this console a couple of years ago called the Ouya. Just Google yeah, it. Yeah. Ouya. Uh, man. Yeah. Exactly. The, the the less I say about that, the better. However, there's well, a new. You know what? They, they tried. They tried. I don't think the industry was ready yet, and the technology definitely wasn't ready, but they tried. This, however, is the Polium 1, uh, which is a Web 3 console, which will never happen. And in the words of Kotaku, the Polium 1 will finally allow you to fall for NFT scams via console. That's not That's not my what, words. It's theirs. What more could we ask for? Honestly, we're like... Yeah. When when the NFT stuff started kicking off, I was like, if only there was a way that I could lose all of my money that didn't involve a monkey picture. And yeah. now there is. It's in. It's in a. I mean, it's. Do you think this thing's ever gonna get made? Um. But like, like realistically, like, like news aside, like, like mano a mano, Slytherin to Slytherin. <laughs> do, do, we, do, do we? Do we believe that this is ever going to be more than a very weird PS4 controller knockoff render? Um, and I, the name I, that I sounds hope... like sounds like something that you'd find kicking around in in Stalker. It's really funny that you've said a, a PS4 controller render because that's by the way that was not hyperbole. That it really no, is one of them. Looks, if you Google it, it looks. Yeah, um, I mean... It's it's. I I don't think so, but they did make the Ouya, and like I remember that like around the Wait, time. This is, this... Are these the same people? No, but it... but I mean, okay, bad I ideas say, can the, exist. The, 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 the Ouya, the Ouya, yeah. like villain <laughs> arc of, hey, we're going to make a digital only ownership console. Oh, the industry ain't ready yet. Okay, to NFTs is one hell of a heel turn. That's that. That's. But the I thing wasn't is about that. The, okay. the, you know, my, if you want my honest opinion, yeah, the thing about yeah. all these crypto bros or whatever is like, yeah. Like they spend money, like they've got money, even if they don't have money. So like they they can fund it, even if they can't afford yeah. to fund it, they're gonna fund yeah. it, right? Uh, they'll, they'll fund it. They'll throw money at it until they realize that there's no money back in it. Like, and, and I guess that that's the worrying thing, actually. Taking all the jokes aside, taking mm. like all of the, all of the kind of memes aside, um, you know that to in tangentially related news, I guess you know the value of pretty much every fucking NFT is as tanked yeah. um over the past month um this stuff only gains traction and works when there are enough people that buy into it that money can be made out, out of it from the, the people at the top you know it's almost yeah. like a pyramid weird that um it's... and th for this to actually come to fruition there needs to be enough people making developers and you can already see like if you look at the, the awfully rendered ui game library that they have on their website for this it is already full of games that don't exist that are literally just key art for other games with like bits added to them it's, it's... literally just other game key art thrown on there like they're already on the yeah. asset flippy nature of getting this thing loaded well, the specs and the only are way scary. this thing for it. Yeah, but you... they don't mean anything. Give it give give me the specs. Give right, me the, the specs. specs like, are, <laughs> okay. 
4K Ultra HD, mm -hmm. 8K HDR, mm -hmm. ray tracing, and touch mm -hmm. ID. So, okay, so it's 4K Ultra HD, and it's 8K. So it's 4K and it's 8K. How, how many frames per second is it on that? How many hertz? Are it's a, oh, it's a, it says it can do 120 frames a second with ray tracing, even though it doesn't have a graphics card, by the way. And okay. Touch ID, which is like Apple's patented yeah. touch thing that they only have in Apple consoles. They, you can't have it. So it's going to have Touch ID, which I mean, I mean, can't I mean, be look, real. Like, the thing is that there's enough, as, as with any of these things, there is enough examples of this kind of stuff potentially existing um, out there that this stuff can sound viable to people that don't really kind of know, if that makes sense. Like, you know, you, you look at things like GeForce Now, you look at things like Stadia, you know, once again, hey, shout out to the yeah, Stadia crew. Hope, 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 you've been, hope you've been enjoying those who remain in Moon. Mm -hmm. uh, well, no, I, I, we see, we see all of the requests on, on all of our socials going, hey, bring this, bring this, bring this. I ain't seen none. But we see you. Yeah. We see you. We hear you. Um, but with with regards to it, like there is enough examples of here is a device that allows you to play games without integrated hardware that that is powerful uh, that allows you to get like you know access to those kind of games and you would think that a web 3 even though that means fucking nothing um enabled console would be the kind of thing that would allow you to do that so on on the base level even without all of that it sounds plausible and, and that is the the the, the non funny scary thing for me is that like at the at the ground level in all of the nft stuff um and you know there's two schools of thought are these people worthy of some amount of empathy because they have been scammed or is it ridicule because it was obviously a scam from minute one but the kind of people that buy into this kind of thing aren't the kind of people that are swimming in money now, like this is the thing yeah. the people at the top that are making these things the, these fucking nft houses making these projects selling them out mm -hmm. to celebrities who are then like i don't know i have a name on anything check it out i've got nfts now i don't know i made a few extra zeros up here in my account and like like and this fucking console like the people at the top they've got the money to burn on these stupid fucking things but the people that buy into this stuff they don't they buy into this stuff because they're fucking desperate and let's be real like like taking a, a real break for a second from video games quality of life in general for a lot of people isn't great the cost of living's going up massively and a lot of the time wages aren't going up with that you look in america you've got the fuel stuff you look in the uk you've got well equally the fuel stuff at the moment and then food and then brexit stuff and whatever people don't have a lot of expendable income and they see things like this and they go yo check it out i can just like buy this thing and all of a sudden i'm making money okay cool that's how it works and they'll bet the farm on it because they're fucking desperate and yeah. then they get left holding the bag at the end of it. And that sucks. And something like this, this damn console, it's only going to get made and viable if enough people buy into it and fund it and throw money at it. And then all of a sudden, you've got this console out there that parents will go, Timmy has got a monkey picture. And now there's this console and we're going to spend a lot of money on it. And then, I don't know, he seems happy, I guess. Wait, what's happened? And everything's ruined. And it's, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Timmy should have stuck like, on Roblox like the rest of them. That, so, and that's it. That's yeah. it. Like, like, yeah. I don't know. Like, like the wide stance on NFTs is and always will be no fucking thanks. All right. Like, the, no, no, we don't work with devs that that want them in their stuff. We won't fuck with creators that enjoy them. Like, it's if that's your bag, cool. But it ain't ours. But this is the epitome that like this is the snake eating its tail as far as nfts go now because at a certain point there's going to be enough money thrown onto this for it to potentially be a thing devs are going to need to make games for it i don't know if you've seen any of the games that have been the nft games that exist they are all awful they are so is it grit that one that's that they're trying to promote as being grit, like Red grit was, yeah so on and the it's website, yeah, and it's was... not and it's not and you know what you know what let's take let's, let's take it personal Let's take it personal. Is, we literally, I like we this quite, no, no, I'm sorry. I got yeah. angry. I, yeah. we, we literally had to go legally after a bunch of absolute fucking scam artists the other month who had basically created an online metaverse racer where you put your, your funding into it and it, it, it becomes like an online metaverse race and the results of it determine your winnings. So not only is it this almost like fucking gambling aimed at kids from minute one, mm. the entire thing, they were using grip 
They were were using our fucking trailers. They were using our assets. They were using our stuff and saying, this is the game. It wasn't. That's Grip. Grip is awesome, right? Grip is a really cool game. It exists. They were promoting bullshit. I wonder how many copies of Grip you can... Yeah, oh, at a price God. of one monkey. And, and, and this is and this is the thing, like like everything around this entire like like in the industry itself, you will find asset flips. In the industry itself, you will find people starting projects, projects failing, a lot of leaks, a lot of betas, a lot of stuff that you know you will never see come to light for that very reason. But this this thing, everything around this, everything around NFT creations and projects is is that that there's was... no. There was shades there's no there clean. of, um... you know, there's no clean. You don't. You're not seeing NFT games coming out and actually proving value. You're not seeing them answer questions that need answering. You're not seeing them doing anything of that nature. And it just worries me. Like as funny as this news is, um, it worries me that people are, you know, devs are going to get really damn sleazy to get things on this and the people that buy this and the people that buy those games are going to get scammed out of even more and the people at the top that make this stuff are going to make sure a lot of people do because it's the only way they're going to get their money back before they leave someone holding the bag that was good that was um that was a little bit like um uh howard beale in 1976 network (laughs) i'm as mad as hell i'm I'm mad as hell (laughs) that was that was close it was Um, close during uh, Gary's impassioned um, polium uh, testimonial, I have discovered that if you sold uh, your Bored Ape NFT at the average market price of three hundred and forty-four thousand US dollars, you could in fact mm. buy seventy-six thousand six hundred and sixteen copies of Grip. Oh, well, there you go. You. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of grip. That's, 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 that's a lot of. That's a lot of. That's a lot of grip. That's 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 a way better value investment. Like all right. Least... So Polium one, I mean, look, no more to yeah. say now, is there? So yeah, yeah good luck and all that. Slash, no. Good luck, and you know what? As with everything, I hope we're wrong. I hope we're wrong. Yeah. Like, like, like you know, we we are at the end of the day. People will point at people that don't like NFTs, and they'll go, "You just don't get it. You just don't get it." You know what? No, we don't get it. Yeah. So. Uh, I hope we're proven wrong. Yeah. Uh, I hope that in two years' time, we're sat going, look at these cool games made using this technology in a way that we didn't even think were possible. But until then, good luck. Stop scamming. Yeah. So right. yeah, um, I I will read out our final bit of news. Whilst we do that, can you please collate our uh, questions? And um, what okay. questions okay. I hear you ask a listener? Well, let me just tell you while Gary goes and hunts them down. Let me let me, let me go grab um, them. You can help shape the podcast by asking us some questions and we will answer them. Uh, before we record the podcast, we just did a tweet. Some questions have already started coming in. We'd like to ask questions that are a little bit uh, longer than 140 characters or 208 characters, whatever it is now. And you can mm. email us at unplugged at wiredproductions.com. That's unplugged at wiredproductions.com. Or, or even if you don't want to, to give a question, you just want to tell Jake that his hair looks nice today. You should do that. Oh, thanks very much. Yes, yes that'd be very nice. Thank you. I, I've done nothing to it and uh, slept for 12 hours. Oh, you're one of those. You're one of those. I just woke up like this. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I'll keep an eye on my hairline. We'll see. Oh, I wish I was here. As the podcast go, uh, we'll see. So, um, right. I want to add on a little bit of light news. Uh, well, it, it, it does kind of end on some erotic role players getting banned. But... <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> um, okay. Right, but That's this is the final. This is the final. This is the final scripted uh, thing before we answer some light-hearted questions. Okay. Final Fantasy okay. fourteen, the critically acclaimed MMO up. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Do it. Do the thing. Do the thing. So, the thing. Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, you might know as the fourteenth Final Fantasy game. Um, it's actually not um, the fourteenth Final Fantasy game. I think it's the twenty-second, and it is a uh, yeah, a critically acclaimed. Uh, MMO RPG with an expanded free t- trial, which you can play uh, you know, the entirety of the Realm Reborn all the way to the Heaven's Lord expansion. Uh, it's very, very popular MMO RPG. It's it's currently the the I think the most played MMO RPG in yeah. the West. Uh, it, it, it's it, it's it's trumped World of Warcraft, and it's chock full of content. Um, yeah. Now, I mean, I, I've put I've put literal thousands of hours in, into this game over the past couple of years. It's it's. Close it's to your a heart. problem, but yeah. it's, it's a problem, but it's a good problem. It's a good problem. Um, yeah, like, I'm on the outskirts of it. You know, uh, honestly, uh, and before we dive into the news, I will say, like you know, you know, fourteen is fantastic as far as quality of life for 
it, it respects your time in a way that a lot of other MMOs don't. Um, you know, the, the fact that you don't need multiple characters to level up different classes and whatnot, you literally just switch the clothes you're wearing and then you're doing a different thing. And that's that. You know, you're not having to worry about, oh, I need a healer level or I need a this level or a that level and, and so on. Like, you know, I got into it from a very Final Fantasy centric fan perspective, and there is so much fan service and it's so good mm -hmm. and it is all amazing. My partner, who I, I got into playing it, had never played a Final Fantasy in her life, and now she probably knows more than I do about everything. Like, like the, the, the game deserves its plaudits. It's very easy to meme on it, but it, it most definitely does. It is, it's great. It's great. But what, what, why are we here, Jake? Why well, are we we're talking here about because imagine, game, imagine MMO, being RPG? like, if imagine going to a city where everybody was having a nice time, and you wanted to meet your friends at a bar, but mm -hmm. like you didn't really know which bar they were in. So you went to a bar and then you found out that you could never leave that bar ever again. And you will oh, never no. meet your friends again. And you are now stuck in this bar with strangers. Didn't the Eagles write a song about this? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's also the, the basic, yeah, it's also the basic concept of purgatory <laughs> uh, or data centers. So, uh, yeah, yep. so a Final Fantasy fourteen data center, they're basically arranged into like two types. There's a physical data center and a logical data center. So a physical data center is like located in a certain area, like America or Europe, um, and they're, they're the different world servers. So if you make a character or an account on Final Fantasy fourteen, then basically yeah, you select, do you want an American server or a European server? Inside Europe, there are multiple data servers inside that logical ones. Not too dissimilar from like shards in World of Warcraft for people that play that that yeah. particular thing. You know, it's basically every instance allows them to separate people up so that you don't have 18 million people in any location at any given time because that would make everything go wonky and fall over. Yeah. But there's a problem with that, isn't there, Jake? Well, there's the, a problem the, with that the, setup. The problem is that you can't travel seamlessly from data center to data center and see your friends. So, at... so say, say if it turned out you played the game and I played the game and we just found I out do now, play the game. I, I play in was... NA Leviathan Primal. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, I play on NA as well. I'm I'm on I'm on uh, Diab uh, Diablos Crystal. Ah, there you go. I, I'm, <laughs> there we are. There we are. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, but 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 say we had that meeting and we were like, okay, cool. Well, we're on the thing. Up until this point, if even we would have to be on the same server and we'd have to be in the same region in order to go and do adventures together, because that's just how it's structured. It's a multi. Right? It's a massively multiplayer game, so it's designed for other players. Really, you know. Yeah. Well, you can't do it. Uh, you, you certainly you couldn't do it until now. Say what? Yeah, they're opening it up, and it. Well, I say they're opening it up. They had opened it up. It went huge. In fact, Square. I don't think they realized how many people really wanted to do this because did yeah. you see? Uh, Fifteen thousand players per minute were requesting yeah. to move. That's a lot. That's a lot. I can't even count that high in an hour, let alone a minute. That's too yeah. Many. Fifteen thousand requests per minute. Many. So, so it currently, I think it's closed again right now, but. The floodgates are literally and metaphorically open. So that's mm. been uh, the big Which is great. Yeah. That's great news. Like, honestly, I mean, you play yourself, you, you know, you'll, you'll bump into any number of people um, across different FCs, across different servers, where you're like, wow, we could really go and run. Because it isn't just the, the, the game itself. It's just the, the sheer breadth of content that's in there. You know, there's people that will literally only play Triple Triad in that game. There's people that will only do crafting. There's people that will exactly. do fishing. There's people that will do hard end game savage content. There's people that will do ultimate content. There's people that will run dungeons. There's people that will make FC houses and run glam contests. Like, exactly, you can yeah. do so much in there that you can always find people that want to do something that you enjoy. But up until now, the fact that that person you meet might not be accessible without you having to go and create another character was always a little bit of a pain. So here's so the thing: super good. That I play Final Fantasy 14 a little bit, right? I play the I'm I'm, I'm through the, I got through the you know I think I'm on Heaven's yeah. Ward content and stuff now, and I did meet oh, lots of so people. Good. One person I did meet started talking to me like, um, my character's called Bad Roleplay, and I only <laughs> talk in all caps Shakespearean English. Like, that's Wait, kinda... is this real? This, this is, is real. real. This is real. This is you. This is real. This is you. This is you. I'm a Lalafell so I'm, I'm a, I'm a Lala summoner <laughs> called no. Bad Roleplay, who only talks in bad Shakespearean English. Badly, because I'm um, called Bad Roleplay. Oh, I love However, this. I, recent, I, love this. I recently had to rename my character to body horror because bad role play what i didn't know was role play uh, that yeah. can be harnessed erotically yeah. and i Anyone had a lot that's been stumbling around limsa 
at, at a certain wow. hour of the night, you will, yeah. It's... So I thought it was quite funny to talk in bad Shakespearean English with all caps on. However, what I started attracting is a lot of very horny, lonely people who started to try and talk to me about my potato-like uh, body. So, because <laughs> I'm a Lalithar, right? So, so oh, no! anyway. Oh, God, you're the worst, you're the worst. You're the first character for this. Yes. Oh, so. Okay, but but let's let's be honest. Before we go further, like it, it does sound, um, and I do like to put disclaimers here because it's very easy to upset people w- yeah. without giving that kind of thing. Like, like there there are genuinely areas and there are genuinely communities that that spring up around this kind of stuff. And you know what? If erotic role play in a video game, especially something that allows you to be as uh, mm-hmm. transformative with your appearance and your personality as fourteen is, um, is your bag. 100% power to you. You want to you want to go oh. down the the, the drowned wench in, in in Limsa with you and your buddies and, and go stand in the back rooms and and do despicable things to each other. Power to you. It's 2022. Go nuts. But consent. Yeah, consensual. You don't walk yeah. up to strangers <laughs> and go bring your potato looking body over here. I'm a I'm gonna show you my limit break. Like like that that ain't oh, how yeah. it's gonna. Don't. Okay? So That's not how how, it how could a bunch of lonely erotic role players bolster their ranks well i don't know maybe, maybe they'd create some kind of community maybe on a area outside of the game where they could arrange in advance like a like a discord or something maybe like a discord and yeah. how could they per chance advertise this not on this podcast well, but... i mean I'd, I'd imagine the best way to go about it would to maybe do something sensible like uh you know look on Twitter or Reddit or socials for other people that have searched for or been at talking about a role nope. play within the game. It's and billboards. The... Billboards. Yes. This Saturday, uh, the the Rain nightclub, popular uh, ERP nightclub, they're hosting a beach party on Final Fantasy XIV. Balmung Ooh. server. Because of the cross date, everybody can, yep, you know, everyone come can go. together. Everyone's invited, yeah, quite it's... literally. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. Well, I'm ready well, for this yeah. beach party. What's, so the club the owner... In real life, bought four billboards in California and Texas, and started advertising um, the su- the summer bash. I love the use of the word bash. Um, bash. Bash is a good word. And, bash is a uh, strong word. Yeah, I think they've got into a lot of trouble. Basically, Gary, oh. what do you know about this? So um, I, I was playing foil to 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 your info there, but yes, this is um, a, f- a fascinating story. Um, so this, this erotic roleplay group existed within the Discord. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, like you know, communities out there, as long as everything's above age and consensual, you do you. But um, this erotic roleplay group, um, again, decided to purchase billboards and advertise a summer bash that uh, now that data travel is a thing, people are able to go from mm. many different locations. And again, within within the 14 community, this is something that happens quite often, not even erotically. You know, you will see people put up events being like, hey, you know what? There's going to be 12 of us. Well, well, we're going to this particular, we're going to the Bees Knees. We're going to this nightclub and we're all going to, you know, we'll get somebody, we'll, we'll jump in the Discord, we'll, we'll play music and everyone can come in their characters and get dressed up and have a dance. And it's a social thing. It might sound weird to those that don't do it, but it's a big thing in game events for people outside. It's, it's mm-hmm. massive. You can literally get married in the game. Heck, I, I got married in the game and had mm-hmm. everyone turn up like you mm-hmm. arrange invitations and invites and you pick color schemes and you know you know your method of transport i've attended several weddings in the game like it's it's a weird thing but that's just how involved the world is yeah so arranging a summer bash isn't entirely out the realms of normality for 14 even within an erotic role play perspective it's not outside the realms of possibility but where it crossed the line what happened is they found themselves banned and they found themselves banned because in the adverts themselves, they were using modded content. Oh. Modded content. So 14, much mm-hmm. like a lot of games, is very, very moddable. Um, you know, anyone has played an, an MMO. I myself, when I played WoW, you know, I would run the uh, DPS meter. I would run LVI. I would run Deadly Boss mods and so on and so forth. Because those are all things that help make playing the game easier. And, uh, you know, allow you to customize it in a way beyond the the awful base UI that I can have. 14 allows you to do a lot, a lot of the same, um, but it is very, very heavily frowned upon. And it's the kind of thing where you, to the point where Yoshi P has straight up said, like, look, modding will get you banned. Modding will get you banned. And there's obviously a lot of this in the erotic scene of 14. You get content creators that will quite literally create mods that allow you to make nude versions of the characters, custom animations, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. And, and 
do, you know, okay, that's their thing. If they want to run the risk of getting banned to make thirsty Vieira content, that's cool. That's cool. Like, like that's that's your decision. You do that. But doing that and putting it with the modded content very visible and advertising your Discord and your character names and everything and making it so visible that it's on a billboard and gets picked up by the news is a surefire way for the developers to go, oh, wow, awful lot of people doing modded content in there and then getting banned, um, which is yeah. unfortunately what happened. Or fortunately, I mean, I guess they are breaking the terms of service of the game. Um, I thought it was pretty lit, honestly, that they got a billboard because yeah. they don't make any money out of it. But No, like, no, they don't at all. And it's, it's you it's know what? It's quite funny, isn't it? But... It's funny. They, 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 that's one way to but go But what's not it, funny is I don't think, I think I'm the only person I know that's played Final Fantasy XIV without putting at least a thousand hours into it. So I know that everyone who's been banned has probably lost a lot of hours worth of stuff. They, they probably have, or they, they were maybe burner accounts. Uh, I mean, again, you ah, can. True. You you, yeah. you can play free up to level sixty, including the the, the first expansion um, and yeah. so on and so it's forth. It's a meme, but it's not a joke. It's, it's a meme, but it's not a joke. There <laughs> there is an awful lot of content in in those yeah. in those first like hundred two out two hundred hours. You know, creating a new character, sticking your mods on, taking it to the party. If it gets banned, it gets banned. Like 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 it might not be the the end all be all for them. Um, but that's, that's very true, actually. Yeah. But but regardless, you know, it's just a weird thing. It's just a weird thing. Like like from the outside, if you're not familiar with fourteen, the fact that there's erotic roleplay groups is is something that might be a bit weird. If if you're outside and you're not familiar with the context of gatherings like beach parties, like weddings, like like you know nightclubs and even picnics and so on and so forth you'd be like what people do that um and then but even if you are familiar with the game and none of that seems weird to you the step of going and buying a billboard and promoting modded content on the billboard for an event in multiple states across multiple locations is yeah like that's that's the part for me that's the weird part that's the, the part that makes this a little bit obscure and you know, that as seems to be the, the theme of this episode, they, they, they fucked around, they found out. <laughs> like, yeah, cr- a- absolutely. Yeah, that is the theme of the episode. I wonder if we can put that in the YouTube title. I wonder if we can. can we? We'll, we'll probably uh, get banned. Um... We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, that's all we've got on the cards today, apart from our. Should we do our quick fire questions? Quick fire questions, yeah. All right, beautiful. So, only a handful, because I only put these up at the beginning of the show. Um, but. Please. Uh, 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 about 10 specials. o'clock in the morning as well. At about 10 so. o'clock in the morning. So send questions in, see our social posts like this, fire them in. Uh, we have got Steve, who is in the void, saying, can we talk more about RRR movie? I, we, I think we need to stage an intermission. I've still not seen it yet, but he's very much far too in love with that. I've heard it's good, though. Everyone that has seen it has said nothing but good things. I have not. This is. Am I out of touch? Like, what the hell? You're out of touch. No, no, we should call this one DMCA because we're just musically ruining ourselves. Um, we have. Okay, Steve. We'll, we'll talk more about it. We have talked more about now, it. One of the highest <laughs> grossing films. Yeah. Ever. 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 Like ever. It, it, I know nothing about it. Still, Steve has waxed lyrical about this, and I, I will find time in the middle of house moves. To um to deal with it, but I I need to I need to see it. I guess it does it does look bonkers in a good way. It's on and it's available. So this isn't uh I, as go you ahead, can probably ahead. imagine promo, it's, we're promo, not sponsored, but it, you can find it. It's on Netflix. So in case you're wondering, if just you in case to see, this like, is the can... third week in a row we spoke about this. this is great. Oh, um, is it? It was just this week of my yeah, last yeah, week yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. One hundred percent. So uh, we we gotta get a cut. Well, I, think, I think we like, need like, to. No, I, yo, listen. RRR movie. Like, come on, hit us up. Sponsorship. Yeah, come, we'll, come we'll, 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 yeah. we'll run a clip for the film at the beginning of the episode. We'll, we'll, we'll find a developer. We'll make a game. Talk to us. That's really funny. Um, da, 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 da. let's have a look. Uh, we have sandwiches cut into triangles or rectangles. Which is better and why? Right. <clears throat> I think my opinion's like not very popular, but I like them in rectangles, you know. The triangle thing just seems one. like I'm you're trying to. Ha- you're not a real Slytherin. It Jake. seems I'm, like you try. I, like whenever I do it, like I've done it before. So like my wife has uh, the triangle sandwiches, so I do that. But whenever I do, I always feel like it's so unnatural. And also when I do it for myself, I feel like I'm trying too hard to be an adult. <laughs> I feel like when like, I make myself a sandwich and I'm like, I know I should do it, but then I'm just like, no, just give in. And I, I just enjoy it a lot more. For so- and do you know what as well? What makes me feel dead weird, yeah? 
right? What's that? Everyone says it's easier to hold. Who's holding it at an angle? If you just hold, get a rectangle, you can hold the two sides, and then you've got the length there, perfect. But if you're holding it in a triangle, you've got to hold it like with like, praying mantis hands. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, look, right. I see. No, but, but, but you turn it the other way. You hold it thin, and then you get to start at the thin end of the sandwich and go, no, 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 no. Oh! No. I never hold it thin. <laughs> No, no, I do. No, hang on. This doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. With a rectangle, you're holding the, the thin side of the rectangle, yeah. and it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. But if you hold, right. but if you got I it, we need a sandwich in here. We need a visual. Yeah. I need a, a... Damn. Damn. I'm okay. gonna bring. I'm gonna bring a whiteboard next time. I'll draw. For some... what it's worth. For what it's worth, I'm team triangle. I'm team triangle. I don't like. I can tell. Sandwiches. I could. I got those vibes. <laughs> <laughs> you're a triangle yeah. sandwich that's what it is uh, but, no i don't know what it is about the rectangle sandwich it's something about it and i don't and i'll be honest with you as well it I, just seems sad to me like i look at a rectangle sandwich and i feel sad for it because it droops i don't know like, like <laughs> you look at it <laughs> you look at it and it's just like yeah like, like it just looks sad a triangle sandwich you look at it and you're like that's good that can yeah, stand on its own that's it that can stand on its own whereas yeah. i look at a rectangle sandwich and i'm like i just feel like you're full of like Chicken paste, you know what I mean? Like, like I automatically assume. That's true, assume, actually, but it's got that it's got that rustic chic assume, vibe. Like, yeah, if you've got a triangle, right. to me, if I when I, I only time I ever see a triangle with my own eyes mm. is when I'm eating a meal deal. Yeah. So, if it's a rectangle, it means it's homegrown, baby. Yeah. Apart from when I'm making a sandwich for my wife, but you know what I mean? That's her business. She can yeah, eat it whatever no, no, she wants. But I'm exactly. telling you right now, I'll have yeah. I also I, on a sandwich, I don't really have them much, but when I do, like yeah. They're normally pretty sad affairs anyway, to be honest. Because oh. I thought I'm going to better in, isn't it, if I'm having a sandwich? Yeah, I'll be verge. But when you say sad, do you mean just like, you know, Pathetic. cold meat cold meat and like a bag salad? Or are we talking like pot noodle sandwich? Like, 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 like oh, the no. layers of, yeah, like how uh, bad are we no, talking? No, like, like, do you know what my, like, if I have a sandwich, I don't, I very often have sandwiches, to be honest, yeah. But when I do, because like the thing is, a sandwich to me is just like a, it's like a gateway drug to a burger. So I... <laughs> No, but do you know what I mean? So if I'm going to have, if I want to have like salad and like meat and stuff like that, I just have a burger, isn't it? So okay. I won't bother. So to be honest, what I like, I like my sandwiches to be as sludgy as possible. Yo. So I like sandwich filler in there. Like, you know, it was like chicken tikka sandwich fillers or whatever. Yeah. But just, just you kicking around the the, the, the the cold produce aisle in Tesco's, just eyeing up the meal deals. Like I can quit any time I want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, let's bring me to McDonald's. Anyway, so, so oh. yeah, so that's that's fine. Okay, that's, no. a split. That was yeah, fifty fifty. Very good. Yeah, fifty fifty. Um, Britt Roberts says, "Are there plans for any future soundtrack releases oh. for Arcade Paradise?" Now, this is falling a little bit into. You might get this occasionally. We do say, "Ask anything you want, and we will answer." But, and we're we're pretty open, I think, compared to a lot of of publishers and developers, where we we kind of talk a little more blatantly and openly about what we're doing because that's where yeah. we realize that's what people enjoy. That's people like seeing how the, how the sausage is made. Um, but you will occasionally ask something that will get a, hey, we literally cannot talk about that because um, it's a marketing thing. And that is saved for either a marketing beat or a deal or it's something that just legally we can't. There are many reasons why you might sometimes get that answer, but it is always within good faith, not because we don't want to tell you. Mm. Um, so what we can say as far as this, are there any plans for a future soundtrack release for Arcade Paradise? The Arcade Paradise soundtrack is a fucking banger. It is a banger. It is certified. We have got the private masters in the office and we listen to it regularly. You are going to adore it. And if you sign up for the beta running this weekend and next weekend, you'll be able to hear some of it for yourself. Very good. Full circle. You will be able to hear it in many different ways and we will reveal what those ways are in due time. That's very well done. So, mm. is that the perfect way to end it? I think there is, there is there is a little bit of a bonus question here, actually, where someone says, if um, LKA Games developers of Martha is Dead and Storm in a Teacup developers of Close to the Sun and more, who I've invited to our games job fair, decide to come to the site for a bit, can you arrange to make sure they bring their dogs with them? Asking for myself. So basically, developers that have been invited to a jobs fair, please make sure you bring pets with you because the organizers would like to pet your dogs. Um <laughs> Not you really a question for the podcast, but you heard it here Just first. Just a demand. You you know Just a I mean? demand, really. But you know what? We can be a megaphone for the right causes, and petting animals is most definitely the right causes. Very, very good. Okay, I think, I think, Jake, 
I'm not going to I'm not going to take away your megaphone here, but I think that's the show, my friend. I think we're spent. We did it. We I think we're spent. we got it all. How to cheat at speedrunning, gaming's biggest data leaks, and erotic roleplay. Come on. Yeah. I mean, what more can you ask for, really? You don't get this kind of content anywhere else. Guys, thank you very much. If you want to uh, follow the podcast on some of the other sort of facets, if you're listening to this, you can check us out on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this, you can take us in your car. Um, Let us in your ears. Yes, please. Uh, on any of the podcast providers. We're on like, um, I was going to say the word, but if I say the word, it might trigger somebody's virtual assistant. But any of the virtual right. assistant people's names that you can say, the one that begins with an A. Alexa! Or an a, Play Despacito. <laughs> uh, um, so you can okay, do that. Okay, Google. Play Despacito. <laughs> Shit, that's set my phone off. <laughs> okay, huh? you know what? I deserve it. Yeah, that. it's a double edged sword, isn't it, mate? You've got to be careful with these, these dark yeah. arts. All right, yep. so thank you very much. Find us everywhere, and you can tweet us questions next time um, yep. at Wired P for. At Wired P, all over the internet. I'm yeah. talking. Every social site, we're talking YouTubes, we're talking Twitter, we're talking Facebook, we're talking Twitch, we're talking Discord, wired.gg forward, discord oh forward slash wired P. And we are talking, of course, the Wired Unplugged podcast and show. Please send your messages in, as Jake has already said. Please send your questions in. Tune in. New episodes every Friday, sometimes featuring people like me, sometimes featuring Aaron and Jake in the same room, although I've never seen it. And often featuring wonderful content from developers, movie stars, audio stars, musicians, the world. Maybe speedrunners. We'll see. Maybe speedrunners. Thanks very much, guys. Have a really nice day, night, wherever you are. Goodbye. Word Unplugged.